God, family, it's so good to be here in my living room again, in your living room, or in your family room, or in the kitchen, or in your car, or wherever you are, it's so good to be here with you today. I'm Pastor D, and I'm from the Heights Church, and we have a just a thrilling word today that God shared with me so that I can share it with you. And before I get into that, I want to share a word that God laid on my heart. And he said to me, for you, because it's for all of us, for both of us, for each of us, let nothing take you out of the spirit. Let nothing take you out of the spirit. There is so much going on. In the past couple of weeks, there's been a furor on our streets, um, on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Just a furor, a bunch of disturbances, uh, um, inequality, whatever you want to call it, injustice, rioting. There's just been so much going on. And God wants you to know, let nothing take you out of the spirit. Listen to this scripture from Galatians 5, 16. It says, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. God does not want us walking in the flesh. He wants us to be yielded to the spirit so that we can hear what the Holy Spirit is saying and walk in the spirit. So I encourage you today. I just encourage you from the very bottom of my heart that you walk in the spirit. Don't walk by your emotions. Don't walk by uh, what you heard on television. Don't walk by what somebody else might be saying. Don't walk by what you heard in past times. Walk by the spirit. So let's get into the scripture for today. And it's going to come from Psalm 42. Psalm 42. This psalm is a cry of trouble, a cry of deep sorrow, a cry of despondency. And what is despondency? It means to be in, in extremely low spirits caused by the loss of hope or courage. To feel unhappy with no hope or enthusiasm. A strong feeling of unhappiness caused by difficulties which you feel you cannot overcome. A sad emotional state, much like depression. And I'm not talking about clinical depression here. So I just want you to know that. I'm not saying anything about clinical depression. We're talking about a depression that comes from events and occurrences and difficulties and trials and agitations and roadblocks and different things that occur in our life. In other words, it's doldrums, dejection, gloom, heart sickness, and melancholy. Have you felt any of those things? This is, this is just the way David was feeling at this time. He, David was saying, or should I say, he was earnestly appealing to his own soul, asking why he should be downcast or cast, feeling cast down. He encourages himself to fully trust in God. Let's look a little bit at the historical background about the book of Psalm. In Hebrew, it is Sefer or Sefer Tehillim, meaning book of praises. And it was gathered into five books. It was written by David to the worship leader. Each chapter of Psalm is devoted to praise and thanksgiving from the writer to Yahweh. And Yahweh, the significance of the name Yahweh is that it is confirming God's existence and more importantly, his presence. Hallelujah. It is a mirror or a looking glass of pious and devout affections. Pious and devout, meaning you are really focused on God. You want to live a right life in him following his principles and his commandments. Hallelujah. Psalm 42 is the first psalm of what they would call book two of the five books as they categorize the psalm into five books. Psalm 42 and 43 are actually one psalm. So when you're reading Psalm 42, go ahead and follow it 
with Psalm 43, and then you'll have the whole thought behind what David was saying. So we're going to be in Psalm 42, verse 11, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Hallelujah. Psalm 42, 11. So the first thing that we're going to look at in this verse, verse 11, is why are you cast down, soul? And your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Why are you cast down mind? Why are you cast down will? Why are you cast down emotions? We have to talk to ourselves, challenge our discouragement, rebuke a drooping spirit. We cannot surrender to our emotions. I remember um, my first pastor after I got saved says, sometimes we have to flush our emotions. We can't be led by our emotions. As people of God, we're led by the Spirit of God because we are the sons of God. So we can't surrender to emotions. We have to tell ourselves, why do we have this chicken-hearted melancholy? We have to argue with fear and faithlessness. We need to run to God when all this stuff is occurring, when things are coming against us, when things are weighing us down. We need to run to God and not away from him. Shoot down sorrow with trust. Shoot it down. I remember hearing um, Dr. Lester Summerall saying, a scripture a day will keep the devil away. A scripture a day will keep that um, sorrow from hanging on to you and clinging to you. Misery does pass. So we won't, even if we feel downcast, we don't have to stay in that forever. Listen to this quote from Martin Lloyd-Jones, and it says, A depressed Christian is a contradiction in terms, and he is a very poor recommendation for the gospel. Nothing is more important, therefore, than that we should be delivered from a condition which gives other people looking at us the impression that to be a Christian means to be unhappy, to be sad, to be morbid, and that the Christian is one who scorns delight and lives laborious days. That's not who we are in Christ. That is not who we are. The second thing, so why so downcast, soul? Why? The second thing is, why are we disquieted? And I just want to say, when I was looking at why are you downcast soul, these are things that are occurring from the inside. Negative thoughts, that we're hanging on to negative tapes. Things are whirling around our mind that are so negative and destructive. But the second thing, why are we disquieted, I feel are things that bombard us from the outside. What does it mean to be disquieted? It is a feeling of anxiety or worry, to take away peace or tranquility, to deprive of equanimity. Now, what is equanimity? That's a big word. Composure or evenness of temper is taking away our calmness and our peace. It's disturbing us and making us very uneasy. Why is our quiet gone away? Why is it gone? Is societal or external stressors adding additional pressure? Are we feeling like we're being squeezed? Why are we losing it? Are we trying to maintain an unnatural facade? You know what I mean. Don't duck this. It, it's like we act all like we're just the calmest person and we're so peaceful on the outside. Yet on the inside, there's turmoil, there's turbulence. We're so disturbed on the inside. Are we play acting? I hope not. I know I have done it. I don't want to keep doing that. 
Is our God so puny that everything disturbs us? The least little thing sets us off. Our kids say something and we just go wacky about it. Something happens in the news and we get angry. Something happens in the grocery store and it just disturbs us so, us so much that we just lose control of the rest of the day. Is our God so puny? God wants us to be radical followers. He wants us to be strong in him and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. The third thing is hope in God. Is that where your hope is today? Is it in God? Is it in your finances? Is it in just having your family close? Is it in your mom and dad? Is it in a being able to finish school? Where is your hope today? Discourage, discouragement may try to bury us, but stay confident in God and expect God to deliver because God is a mighty deliverer. He said he brought out the children of Israel with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. He will bring us out too. He is still mighty. He is still doing those things today. He will bring us out. Trust in the name of the Lord. He is our provider. He is our healer. He is our restorer. He is our deliverer. Trust in the name of the Lord. He is our El Shaddai. The God that is more than enough. Choose to believe in his promises. What are some of the promises in scripture? I don't know if you ever just taken maybe an hour or so and just looked up all the promises that you could within that hour. I'm telling you, you'll be encouraged. Psalm 119, 165 says this. Great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. Isaiah 26 and 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 16:33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Scripture wants us to know that we can trust God. We can trust him for what we need. We can trust him to be there, to hear us when we call out to him. He said, call upon me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. Hallelujah. God is not disconnected from us. He is a God who is with us. Emmanuel, he's with us. Hallelujah. For the person of faith, difficulties and problems are blessings in disguise. You might say, Pastor D., that is the craziest thing I've ever heard. What do you mean by that? That is just not something that I can agree with you on. I'm going to tell you it's true because when we have difficulties and problems, it drives us to God. Hopefully, it will drive you to God. Hopefully, you'll go straight to him and lay it at his feet and cast it on him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. Listen to this quote from Francis Schaeffer. He says, our trust in the Lord does not mean that there are not times of tears. Can I say that to you, brothers and sisters? Just because we believe in the Lord, just because we're trusting in him to do things, doesn't mean that we won't be crying. These last couple of weeks, I have cried more, I think, than I've cried in a year. 
trusting him doesn't mean that tears are just going to go away. I think it is a mistake as Christians to act as though trusting the Lord and tears are not compatible. Yeah, nobody wants to be crying. Especially um, strong guys. They don't, they don't want anybody to know that they're crying or that they would cry. They want to act as if they've got it all together. Sometimes we do too, sisters. We want to act as if before others, we have it all together. But we, do, we can go before our God and we can just tell him everything. I am so happy about that. I don't have to keep up a front with God. I'm done. This is, I'm going back to the scripture in Psalm 42, 11. This is the last thing I'm going to be talking about. And I hope you caught on to those three things. Why so downcast, soul? Why are you disquieted? Hope in God. Listen to this, Psalm 42, 42 11. And again, this is from the message. Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God. I'm talking to my soul now. Soul, I don't care how you're feeling. Emotions, I don't care that you, you, you just feel so turbulent in there and I feel uncomfortable. Fix your eyes on God. Soon I'll be praising again. Because it's not going to last always. Trouble isn't going to stay with us forever. We will come out. And we will be what God wants us to be. We, as we follow his path. He puts a smile on my face. He's my God. Is he your God today? He can be. All you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And know that he died on the cross for you. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You are saved. If you do that, God is your father. Because the only way to God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. I know people say there are a lot of pathways. Jesus said the only way is through him. And I trust that. I love you sisters and brothers. I pray that the word of God is going to dwell in you richly today. And that you will grab a hold to this. And no, you don't have to stay in sorrow. You don't have to be sighing. You don't have to be regretful about everything. You don't have to linger in the past. That you can go forward in your great God because he loves you. You're precious to him. Let's pray. Father, I just give you thanks and praise for your word. Your word is rich. Thank you that it can change our lives. It can change our circumstances. It can change our minds. Father, I'm so grateful for your word. Lord, lead us in the direction that you want us to go. Let us not be turned aside by the happenings in our environment, the happenings in our government, the things that we are hearing on television or on reading on the internet or even hearing on the internet. Lord, let us stay with you. Let us hold your hand. Walk with us, God. Take us down the path that you want us to go. Lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. And I just give you praise and honor because you are to be honored, God. You are the glorious God, the only God, the one true God. And we thank you for being a part of our lives. We thank you for loving us enough that you would walk through every day that we are on this earth with us. And we give you the praise, honor, and glory that we no longer have to be in sorrow, that we no longer have to be troubled, that we can bring it all to you. Thank you for helping us in Jesus' name. Amen.